Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sisters. Indeed, strange things do happen in this world. The message, it reads like this. Hello, my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? So, my brother, I came here to South Africa. This was in the year 2022 after my little sister had came here to South Africa. And then I also came and I started to stay with my little sister and her husband. But things were really difficult because they were just staying in a one room at the farm where they were working. So there was hope for me to also find a job in the farms where my little sister and her husband were working. But the only problem was that when I went to work, like the foreman, he then started to tell me that he was in love with me. And I said, no, I can never do such a thing because at the place where I was working, I was working really close to his wife. So she had already introduced herself to me and she had showed me her husband who later came and told me that since he was the foreman, he wanted to sleep with me otherwise I, will, I was going to find myself without a job so i didn't know what to do anymore and when i told my little sister she didn't give me like a straight answer if i should sleep with this guy or not because she just said ah dear sister you just need to think about the kids that you left back home in zim you know how much poor our parents are and when you left your kids there you know that you left a heavy burden on our mom so I was really confused when my little sister gave me this advice. So I refused to sleep with that foreman. And that was when I got fired. And then I said, let me go into the city because I had once worked with this other girl there at the farms when we had gone to do this other peace job. So she said that she stayed in this other location. So when I told her about that foreman, she said that this is the reason as to why she could not find a permanent job at that farm because the foreman had told her that for her to be able to work on a daily basis she was supposed to invite him to her house in the location so that he can spend the whole weekend at her house and when she said that no you are not my type then the foreman then said that since i am not your type this means that my boss also is not your type because this man he when he would speak it would be as if the white farmer was his own father anything that he wanted to be done on that farm even the white people will just respect him so a lot of people they were saying that this man he had went to zim to get some charms to make the white people to listen to him so when that lady said you are not my type then he also said that my boss is not also your type so go and find another boss who is your type and you will start to work for that man so she was never able to get a permanent job after i had spoken with her she understood my situation because she had been in the situation before so she invited me to the location where she was staying so this woman what she was doing was that she was working for this other south african man who had his small brickyard in that location so people that were renovating they would come then they would place an order then we would make those cement bricks for those people that is how i started to make some money but it was not a lot of money and it was really hard work me and my friend we then said it is far much better that we go into town so that we can see if we can get a job at the chinese shop even at the somalian shops those ones that sell clothes so my friend then got a job at this other somalian shop then i got a job at this other chinese shop life was really difficult at that time i was only earning 1200 trends so we had to walk on foot going to town and we had to walk again on foot returning back to the location 1200 trends and the shack that we were staying in we were paying 250 rands a month and then we had to split the money and also buy the food life was just difficult i grew so thin 
thing because I could not even buy my own clothes because I had to remove the money for at least to buy the food, to buy some sanitary wear and the rest of the money I had to send it to my parents. So each and every month, the only amount that I could say, at least I have saved something. It was at least maybe 200 rands or less. That was all that I was able to save. So then there was this other girl who came to that shop one day and when she saw that the way that i was being treated by that chinese people that i was working for she felt so sorry for me this girl she wanted to buy a television set so she said that she had gone to game to buy a television set and they wanted a tv license unfortunately she did not have one that is why she was looking to buy this tv at the chinese shop so she said by the way that your boss is speaking with you it is not nice because in in that shop what they were doing was that you are not allowed to sit down you have to stand all day and if it happens that a customer will walk in some people they will just walk in window shopping if you do not convince those people to buy anything from that shop then you are going to see fire because the moment that they walk out of the shop then my boss he will start to shout at you and scream and say go back to zim because you are just useless it was really tough it was really terrible each and every day when you will go to work you will just be praying that at least there should be people that should come and buy something otherwise my boss is going to insult me so that lady when she saw that i was being insulted she ended up buying something so that at least i won't get insulted by my boss so she asked me for my phone number and i told her that my boss was not allowed or did not allow me to give anyone my phone numbers and if my boss would see me taking out my phone while well, i'll be speaking with a potential customer then my boss will insult me so the lady then said okay let me see what i can do so outside there were these other women that used to sell bananas and tomatoes so she said that she was going to write her phone numbers down and she wanted me to take those phone numbers so that i can get the numbers because already she was promising me a job so i was really excited then later on when it was time for me to go on my lunch break i went to one of the women and i asked them if they had been given anything then she pointed her finger across the street and she said that that is where the lady that i had spoken with had gone to after she had left our shop and she i then went to that woman who was selling a tomatoes to my surprise i was then given a small plastic bag that was from pep and when i opened it i saw that there was a phone there uh, there was a brand new phone it was a samsung a03 that i saw in there then when i opened it after i had switched in on then i saw that the only phone numbers that were there they were that lady's phone number she had saved their phone numbers with her name then she in brackets she said call me using this number so i knew that this were her numbers that i was supposed to use when i'll be calling her i then lied to that woman that the lady owed me some money so i had told her to buy me a phone in pep but this was really surprising to me that a stranger will just buy a brand new phone for you but at the same time i was happy because the type of a phone that i was using it was really terrible for me to charge the battery all i had to use a universal charger or i had to get a charger then remove the head of that charger then i'll just use the wires directly charging the phone and these batteries were not lasting at all so i was happy and thankful that god had sent this angel to me that bought this phone for me later on when i had arrived back home i didn't tell my friend about this because i was scared that she was going to tell me to at least return back that phone so i lied to her that i had been saving some money and she started laughing saying that you are lying i know that this is a boyfriend is the one who has bought this phone for you so when she suggested that this phone had been bought for me by one of my secret lovers i then said yes indeed there is someone there is another guy who usually comes at our shop so this guy is in love with me so i took advantage of him and i told him that i want you to buy me a phone if you really love me so we jo we laughed about it then i called that lady we then started to communicate on whatsapp she told me that i was supposed 
to stop going to work. So I stopped going to work. And when it was month end, she had not communicated with me. I then started to regret the decision that I had taken. When it was the day that we were supposed to pay our rentals and all the throughout the month, my roommate kept on asking me the reason as to why I was not going to work. And I kept on telling her that I will go and I will go. So on the day that she said, please, can you bring me half of the money so that we can go and pay for our rent? I just looked as if I was stupid. That was when I thought of selling that phone so that I can pay for my rent and I was already regretting but somehow somehow this lady she located me because after I had gone out then I wanted to go to see these other guys from Zim who were selling phones if you wanted any type of a phone they will bring it to you so I wanted to go and sell this phone to them and I knew that they were going to rob me anyway. So, but I just wanted some money to pay for the rentals. That was when I saw a beautiful car that parked in front of me and it was a black car. Then the lady uh, rolled down her windows and she said, get in, get in. So when I got in, I saw that it was that same lady who had bought me this phone that I used to speak with. She said that she had been looking for me all this while, but I didn't even think about it because if she had been looking for me, why didn't she tell me on WhatsApp since I used to communicate with her, yet she was being unresponsive and how had she managed to locate me? Anyway, I did not ask a lot of questions. We turned around and I told her my problem. She then said, why don't you open that glove compartment? So when I opened it, I then saw that there was cash that was in there. I don't know how much it was, but it was a lot of US dollars and South African rents that were in there. She said, take whatever that you want. So I only took a thousand rands. Then she laughed at me and she said, you are still a small girl, but very soon you're going to be hanging around with the big girls and you're going to know how to use money. What is a thousand rands to me? I, I just thanked her and I took the money. When she saw the place where I was staying, she then said, you are not going to stay in this place any longer. I am taking you with me. And to my friend, she pretended as if she was going to be my new boss and i was going to work as a maid that is how i started staying with her At the time she started to introduce me to a lot of guys that i could clearly see that these guys they were really rich and for the first time i was picked up by this other guy who was driving a g-wagon we went on a road trip and it was really nice when i returned back from that road trip i felt that my tummy it was really aching and when i told her she said that you need to get yourself cleaned she then took me to this other traditional healer when we went there i was surprised because i am a christian these things of traditional healers i do not like them but she said that you need to get your system cleansed and there were a lot of rituals that she was talking about and already i had been seduced with all the presents that she had been buying for me so even if she was going to tell me that she was a ritualist at that point there was no way that i was going to re to refuse i was re i was already addicted to this life of having a lot of money all around the place we went to that nigerian tradition we went to that nigerian traditional healer when we went there then i was told that i had to be cleansed so i was cleansed after i had been cleansed that was when the dreams came i kept on having a dreams sitting on top of a huge pile of money counting the money and this money was just too much it could not be counted when i would wake up i would actually see that just besides me there will be a small bunch that will be of 200 rand notes when i would count it at least it will be somewhere around 5000 or 6000 rands then she would tell me that it is yours you can do whatever that you want with this money then there was a day when she came when she told me the real truth the real deal as the reason as to why she had all the money she then told me that she had sold off her own womb to this other guy who was from nigeria and she wanted me to do the same at that point in time i had already taken my siblings to boarding school and i knew that 
this was all that I had to do because I did not want my parents to suffer anymore. My parents had suffered and I had also suffered that man at the farms he had tried to take advantage of me because of my poverty. She said with the story that you told me that is the reason as to why I felt sorry for you and I chose you. I also want you to enjoy this money that we are given by the God of money. So I then got involved in this money making rituals the way that i sold my womb i went and i was made to sleep with this other nigerian guy after i had slept with this nigerian guy i indeed felt that i was pregnant i was pregnant for nine months but what surprised me was that this baby that i was carrying it was not even moving in my stomach so each and every time when i would go for a scan i would actually go to this other doctor who was a nigerian as well so they would sneak me into this other private hospital where he is working then they will do the scans on me to check if the baby was okay but their heart beat but the heartbeat it was really faint like faint faint and they never gave me like those little pictures that they give you when you go to the doctors to do a scan i never got anything they didn't want me to have any evidence that i was pregnant i was then told that i was not allowed to take any pictures of myself throughout my pregnancy i was treated as if i was a queen i was not even allowed to do any video chats with my mom so otherwise she was going to see that i was now all fat and stuff like that so i avoided sending my pictures so i avoided sending my mom any of my new pictures i would only send the old ones and when the nine months came to pass that was when i was taken to this other hospital but i remember that when we went to this hospital it is a provincial government hospital that I was taken to. What they did is that they came and they took and they picked me up with this other car that had bulletproof windows and they were dark so i could not actually see what was going on but i felt that at the place where we were it was a government hospital because there were a lot of people that were speaking like you know, because there were a lot of people that were in that ward where i was but when it was time for me to give birth i was then taken into another ward as if i was a private patient whilst i was in that ward there were two people that came one was a black and the other one it was white but not like white white you know those people that are from brazil you can see that they are white but they are very different that is the man that i saw they looked like that so they were the people that assisted me to give birth but when i had given birth to my surprise there was no baby that cried but the thing that they showed me i don't even know what type of an animal it was it did not look like a human being at all they only showed me this creature that i gave birth to for only a couple of seconds before i could actually make sense at the things that they were show before i could actually make sense at the creature that they were showing me that was when they took it away and i was discharged there was no evidence that i ever gave birth to that hospital no papers no what because when we went in there it was as if it was just an emergency but from the moment that they took me into the hospital everything was done as if i was just a private patient i gave birth to that hospital in that hospital and i was discharged without any paperwork that was done on me and me not having any documents i'm sure that it was it was really easy for them to hide me in that hospital when i returned back i was feeling a lot of pain because i i had actually given birth to that creature the pain was just too much those people did not even stitch my private parts all that they were giving me was a lot of medication like your painkillers and your antibiotics that was when one day when i went into the shower whilst i was busy bathing my uterus just fell to the ground like that when i was busy bathing myself in the shower i just felt that there was something that wanted to come out of my private part so i then placed my hand on my private part to my surprise i saw that there was a lot of watery discharge that was coming out you know that watery discharge that comes out of your private part 
when you are about to give birth that is what i saw then the next thing that happened was that i felt so much pain like there was a baby that was pushing and i felt the urge to push i could not even control myself i kept on pushing and pushing until i saw that my uterus fell to the ground i screamed and i collapsed when i woke up i was in bed and i was surrounded by these men who were from nigeria and my friend was there and i was then told that the process had been done i had sold off my womb that is how i started making money oh dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by our dear sister the things that people do to get money strange things do happen in this world yo